Okay, so now the other half of that is to get him to disappear again. So we'll go to attribute so they can flick in between these two rules. This time the attribute monster image. Uh, now instead of being uh, transparent, it will be red. What do we want it to do? If it's red, we want it to turn off. So we'll go back up to the timer again. We will keep him uh, attribute of, sorry, function of random. And we'll keep him on for maybe one to three seconds. It can be visible. So we can give him a good whack. And we want to change the image now back to uh, back to being transparent. So pop the change image back to transparent. Where is it? There it is. Back to transparent. Make sure you drag these boxes into the correct spot so that the change image needs to be inside the timer, which needs to be inside the rule. Reduce those, let's see if it works. Cross fingers. They should appear after uh, between a, you know, a few seconds and then disappear after a couple of seconds. So that's good. Okay. Now we need to add the rule that says when the monster is touched, it plays a sound. And then the final rule will be when he's touched, he shows a little flash of explosion, if you like. So we can drag down the rule touch, make a new one. Then when the button is pressed, we're going to play a sound. Down to play sound. And we can choose one of our supplied thwacking noises. Perhaps whack three. And then we could even uh, give it a test. At the moment, this will play at any time, any time that I hit the area, whether it's visible or invisible. So our next step is going to be to make sure that this sound only plays when it is uh, when he's visible, when the red monster is visible. And to do that, it's quite simple. We just add in the attribute. To when the button is pressed, we're going to add in the attribute of monster image is red. Uh, whoops, is red, and that should work. Let's give it a little, quick little test just to make sure. Not working when the monster is invisible. It does work when it's red. So the final step now is to add our little explosion so we know when they're being hit. And then also a counter. So to do that, we're going to add in another actor. We're going to add in the some explosions, some little hit buttons. So plus new actor, we'll call it hit. There he is, hit and we'll bring in some of the explosions that we've got there are a few different ones here if you would like different uh you know different hit explosions if you like for different characters or different monsters you can do that uh, no problem just add it as an extra actor into your uh, you know actor tab there these are a little bit large so we might just reduce the size a bit this was made for an ipad originally so about half the uh the size there um, doesn't really matter. Whatever size you, you think might look good, you can play around with it. Maybe that one's a bit small. Um, just to change the size. And the next little thing to do with our explosions is that we want to add a timer to them. We want, don't want them to be on the screen permanently. We want them to turn up and then disappear quite quickly. So adding a timer after about 0.1 of a second we're going to destroy the actor we're going to destroy it after about 1.1 of a second 
so that we don't so it's not sitting there on the screen for the whole time okay so back to our monster tab making sure we're selecting the monster that's the instance but the one that is actually on the screen to our rule that states when the image is red it's going to be touched it's going to play a sound and now we want it to also spawn an actor so we can go up to there it is there sorry spawn an actor the hit actor and play a sound at the same time and hopefully the actor will only stay on the screen for 0 0.01 of a second doesn't work no transparent actor it doesn't work okay last thing we've got to do is to add a counter um, and that's a fairly simple process so we need to create an attribute for the whole game when we want a counter. So rather than being actors or scenes, we go across the game, down this bottom handy, and we're going to add a new attribute, integers, because we're numbers, let's call it a score. And it's, uh, it's set to zero, so that's quite good. So when we go up to the, the our monster, um, and our third rule, when all this stuff is happening, when it's red, when it's playing a sound and supporting an actor, we also want it to be keeping score as well. So we do that by, when we're going to add in something here, you've got to change attribute inside the same one. And it's an attribute applied uh, to the game, and it's called score. And, and it's an attribute applied to... game score plus one so that each time it continues to add and 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 keep score